In late 2009, wrestling action figure history would change forever when Mattel would take over the WWE license and begin to produce WWE action figures, promising retail launch on January 1st, 2010. After launch, Mattel would arrive on the scene and promise detailed, authentic scaled, highly articulated wrestling collectible figures that we had never seen before. Over 13 years later, and Mattel has produced hundreds and hundreds of WWE action figures with no signs of slowing down and only increasing the detail and authenticity of their action figures. When Mattel first started out, they wanted to name their main line of WWE action figures to be above the rest. So they announced that their main line of WWE action figures would be called the Elite Collection. And if you Google the dictionary definition of Elite, it says a select group that is superior in terms of ability or qualities to the rest of a group or society. And I think it's safe to say after 13 years, Mattel has truly delivered on the name of their line of WWE action figures. At the time of recording and editing this video, Mattel's main line of Elite Collection figures has spanned 101 series with Series 102 up for pre-order. Now we all knew back in the day that Mattel would probably reach the Elite 100 landmark. And when it was announced, a lot of us were probably disappointed with the figures that they selected, but that really doesn't have anything to do with today's video. I always knew once we reached WWE Elite Series 100, I was going to take every single WWE Elite main wave and rank them from worst to best. So that is exactly what we're going to do in this video. There have been dozens and dozens of sublines and store exclusives and build-a-figure lines and things of that nature, but that is not what we're covering in today's video. This is taking every main WWE Elite Series from 1 through 100 and ranking it from worst to best. Now before we get into my official countdown of ranking WWE Elite Series 1 through 100 from worst to best, I do need to lay some ground rules real quick. Throughout this ranking, you're probably going to spark some debate down in the comment section below, and I hope you do. I hope that you do engage with the video. I'd love to know where you guys stand on ranking these series. These rankings are taking the entire wave into account, dissecting each figure one by one and determining which set is overall the best from Elite Series 1 through Elite Series 100. So if an Elite set only has one or two good figures overall in the set, you probably are going to expect to see it in the lower half of the ranking. And just like our other ranking videos, just because a figure set comes in at number 100 at dead last in the ranking does not mean that it doesn't have any redeeming qualities whatsoever, and just because a set comes in at the number one spot in this ranking does not mean that it does not have any faults whatsoever, and that I love every single inch and detail of that entire figure set. So with that being said, this is ranking every set of WWE Elites from Series 1 through Series 100 from worst to best. This was very challenging. Number 100, WWE Elite Series 81. Coming in at the bottom of the ranking, guys, is WWE Elite Series 81. Now, a figure set had to come in at the bottom, just like a figure set will come in at the number one spot. And just like I said, it's not like every single figure in this set has zero redeeming qualities about them whatsoever, but we are taking into account the entire wave. And in this wave, it does feature two of my least favorite WWE Elites, of all time. Running down this set, we do feature a Bianca Belair figure that definitely deserves its flowers. It is the best elite in this entire set. Cloth goods, beautiful attire, great looking figure, and it even featured Ultimate Edition articulation on its boots. This set also features a stunning Steve Austin action figure that was really good, included a first time in the line championship, and it actually identified very well with the character that it was trying to portray. Montez Ford in this set is really good. However, it's not my favorite head sculpt. He looks like he's been hanging out with Matt Riddle a little bit. He has no calf rotation or any lower leg rotation whatsoever. And he also features John Cena feet that make figures fall over flat on their face. The Shinsuke Nakamura in the set also featured an updated Intercontinental Championship, but I was really never a fan of his bodysuit attires. While the color is very nice and he comes with a SmackDown armband, the head sculpt just misses the mark for me, and this is not my favorite iteration of Shinsuke Nakamura. And then you have the two figures that bring down this set the very most, and that is going to be Angelo Dawkins and The Rock. This Angelo Dawkins figure is so massive. The formula for this guy was doomed from day one. His arm arms are way too big, his torso is massive, the shorts are incredibly bulky, the knees were very hard to bend, and it was not a good representation of Angelo Dawkins to pair with Montez Ford. Then we get into the Rock figure, which is way too short to represent the Rock. Mattel has this crazy history of flip-flopping between the ultra jack muscly torso and a torso that better represents the Rock from the Attitude Era, and they have this weird thing where they always love to flip back and forth between the two, never being consistent with which era and what Rock torso they want to do. This Rock does feature the updated 
tattoo, torso is inaccurate, and overall this figure just makes me angry. All things considered, it's kind of wild to think that this would go down as the worst Elite set. Even though I do have a list of problems that I find with this entire wave, it's absolutely a bright sign that this set comes in at the very bottom of the ranking. It honestly just goes to show how damn good Mattel is at making wrestling action figures. Number 99, WWE Elite Series 50. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I know a lot of people would have put Elite Series 50 at the very bottom of the ranking, and Elite Series 81 only beat out Elite Series 50 by a small margin. But when you think of WWE Elite Series 50, the one thing that comes to mind has to be the notorious Boulder Shoulder Elite Series 50 Rhino figure. Often regarded as the worst WWE Elite released of all time by Mattel, the Elite Series 50 Rhino has laughably big shoulders that are absolutely hilarious to look at. When you first look at the figure, you don't even think that it's real until you actually have it in your hands and people have even switched out the shoulders to smaller stature and it actually looks pretty damn good but this figure is laughable and it's honestly one of the only things that drags this wave down as a whole now the rest of the set is not perfect by any means but this is one of the figures that can drag down an entire set by itself because of how insanity that it is now let's move on to the rest of the set man john cena from this set now i often refer to myself as a connoisseur of doctor of thugonomics collectibles but this john cena figure is not it man First of all, the head sculpt's pretty cartoony, but John Cena actually never wore the circular logo shirt with black shorts, and that is not the biggest deal of all time, but it's definitely something that I like to notice and point out. It also had the newer arm articulation, which nobody really liked. John Cena actually only wore the circle logo like this with the Ellen shorts when he returned in 2016, and then later on when he wore this shirt, he wore it with jorts. Never a black color, and also, he did have the square logo, but obviously they weren't going to make that in action figure form because of PBR. They even tweeted about it. They went back and forth on Twitter, they tried to get a cease to assist against the guy. So John Cena had to switch from the rectangle logo to the circle, so he had to avoid the PBR likeness. It's certainly not the worst figure of all time, but it's definitely not one that people search out. Moving on to the rest of the set, we do have a Stephanie McMahon figure, which is her second Elite in 13 series, which is not that big of a gap when you're considering Stephanie McMahon Elites. I'm pretty sure she actually has three main Elites through the span of all 100 main sets. But like her Elite 37 figure, it's another Triple H entrance style attire or WrestleMania gear, and I don't think it was necessary needed. Also have a Shane McMahon figure which means both of Vince McMahon's kids featured on WWE television were in this wave. And the Shane McMahon figure was pretty solid. It's off his WrestleMania 32 match with The Undertaker. We got some new molds and things of that nature. Not a perfect figure but I think at the time it was looked upon fondly. You have a Warlord figure that's pretty damn good. I don't think the likeness and the head sculpt's the greatest but for Elite Series 50 I think it gets the job done on a Warlord action figure. And then you have Trash Corbin to round off the set and I actually think this is his best Elite that we will see in his entire career. Maybe outside the Elite Series 99. And he's actually a guy that has four different Elite figures and four different formulas. Need that for AJ Styles, by God. Trash Corbin over here can get four different formulas, but AJ Styles got to use the same John Brown ugly torso every single time. Update this man. Number 98, WWE Elite Series 77. WWE Elite 77 is kind of unique because it's the second time we saw the SummerSlam Elite Wave merged into the main Elite line, which is something we saw back in Elite Series 68. But this line has a lot going on with it, man. First of all, the best figure in the set easily is the first time in the line Elite Fiend figure. This figure right here was highly sought after. I think they did a fantastic job on this figure. Head sculpt, it really just looks fantastic with the new formula and things of that nature. The Fiend is beautiful and toyetic as it is, but they did a great job including him here in this set. But the rest of the set is pretty mid and honestly if somebody had this as the worst elite set of all time I don't think I would really argue with you I think it is lacking. The Miss Elizabeth in the set really didn't become sought after until the Mega Powers ringside exclusive 2 pack while it's a great head sculpt and the cloth goods and everything like that it's just it's a big shelf warmer a lot of people left this thing on the pegs I bet you could probably well I don't know about now and today but you could probably find Elite Series 77 somewhere on the pegs somewhere in the country. The Rick Rude figure was solid but the staining of the robe was a huge issue for this guy. You'd remove him from the packaging and the staining from the cloth goods robe would be present on his torso and his shoulders and his arms and this is something that led a lot of collectors just to leave this figure mint on car because if you take it out of the packaging more than not you got some staining on the figure that is not removable the ronda rousey in this set is not horrific but it does not compare to her ultimate edition and women's figures don't typically do as well as men's figures on retail shelves the viscera from this set is viscerally horrible i'm just kidding that's, uh, that's just a joke but he's basically a statue i like the hardcore championship the head 
sculpt looks good, and it's actually a really good sculpt and likeness to Viscera, but because of his hard plastic overthrow coat, you can barely move the legs, and this guy is essentially one big hunk of plastic. And then the AJ Styles from this set was a huge, huge miss. The OC gear is not horrible, but it's not a gear that really was iconic in this way. If they were going to plug AJ Styles into this Elite Wave, I think 2018's AJ Styles in the purple gear would have been a better suit. And to this point, this was like the sixth AJ Styles Elite in black attire, and people have been clamoring for a red gear or one of his many other sought-after gears we want to see in figure form, and some of these we still have not seen to this day. AJ Styles, man, he is one of the biggest misses in Mattel WWE action figure history. Number 97, WWE Elite Series 26. Getting into our first set that comes before the 50 mark in this countdown, we're diving into Elite Series 26. There's not necessarily a horrific figure in this set that really sets it back like an Elite Series 50 Rhino or something, but the entire set is just mid as they come. The Big E figure featured in this set is probably my least favorite in the entire set. It's just a really plain Jane figure. It was his first Elite, and his figures are very difficult to pose as it is, and they're just now in 2023 getting around to where they are making his figures better and better. It's Elite Series 26, so the head sculpts were going to blow you away. Way, but this one just wasn't feeling it. The Ultimate Warrior from this set was actually a very bad shelf warmer, and I think if the Ultimate Warrior in your Elite set is shelf warming, it kind of says a lot about your Elite set or the Ultimate Warrior that was selected for your Elite set as it is. We did feature our first Roman Reigns Elite figure in this set, and while it's not an egregious figure, it's definitely not his best. The shoulder tattoo has a massive gap in it, which they've honestly just now addressed in WWE action figures, which is great, and it shows a lot of improvement in the figures, but you have to call a spade a spade in this scenario and the shoulder gap at this point was just terrible they still use this crotch and legs to this day on roman reigns figures probably the best figure in the set is going to be the elite 26 road dog a lot of people were using this figure to make kenny omega customs back in the day because of the baggy pants but i think this is a pretty good iteration of road dog and elite figure form we have the jack swagger in this set which is probably my favorite figure in the set personally really solid head sculpt i like the flags i like the gear and i think this head sculpt honestly is probably the best jack swagger or jake hager action figure head sculpt of all time and then you have Mark Henry in the set. And if you guys know anything about me, you guys know that I despise Mark Henry figures. Legs are super stiff. His ankles are super loose. He wants to fall flat on his face. I don't think they really represent how big Mark Henry is. And Mark Henry figures just give me headaches. I think you can sub this entire lineup with one word, and that is bland. Number 96, WWE Elite Series 34. The next set on our list is going to be Elite Series 34. Much like Elite Series 26, it's not a set that you look at and you're like, God, all these figures suck. But it's also just a set that's very mid. I remember seeing this entire wave on the shelves, shelf warming, like the entire set. I feel like even the figures that are good in the set are just a bit boring and plain. Breaking down this wave, we do have a couple decent looking figures in this set, starting off with my man John Cena. Now, honestly, even though I refer to myself as an expert of John Cena, and again, a connoisseur of the Doctor of Thugonomics, especially Especially when it comes to collectibles. Had Mattel not made this action figure with this shirt, I don't know if I would have remembered this You Can't Stop Me shirt. So on top of the gear not being the best, I love the camo shorts. I think those are great. That must be included in the video. I do love the shorts. This head sculpt was very mid, and I would say overall this is my favorite figure from the set. The way Bear from the set is also pretty good. It does come with a rubber cape, which is not the best, but I think the figure does represent Wade Barrett nice. You have our first time in the line doink figure way before we got his Ultimate Edition, and it's not a bad inclusion. You do have the bucket. The page figure is also first time in the line, and this is back when women's figures lacked in a whole lot of ways, man. This had single-jointed arms, single-jointed legs, very basic feeling. It came with two championships, two championships, which I don't think we want to talk about for a lot of reasons, obviously. This was our first Elite Rusev figure as well. He would have better figures to come down the line. And then we have Hulk Hogan, which you think would be a blockbuster figure included in this set, but it's post-retirement hanging out on the beaches in Florida. Go to the con and find Hulk Hogan chilling there. Elite version of Hulk Hogan. And I'm pretty sure after this figure, he would take a long hiatus. This and the Defining Moments Elite were two of the last Hulk Hogans we got before his figures were blacklisted until he made a triumphant return, and now we get him every other set. Number 95, WWE Elite Series 68. I actually polled my Instagram followers and asked you guys what the worst WWE Elite set of all time was. And Elite Series 68 actually came up a lot in that poll. And I really don't know what exactly it is. This was the first time that they actually merged the SummerSlam line into the main Elite line. And I guess that has a terrible track record. Because Elite Series 77 was already mentioned in this video and we're already on the SummerSlam wave again. But this set does feature some big names. You have Roman Reigns, Undertaker, Daniel Bryan, Braun Strowman. I don't know if he's included with those other names. But the Roman Reigns in this set's pretty good. I 
think this head sculpt we had seen a lot up to this point, he does have the painted on gauntlet. He did come with the red Universal Championship, but I think it's just another run of the mill Roman Reigns. This Braun Strowman figure we had already seen in the top picks wave, and this is around the era when they were pumping Braun Strowman out a lot, and a lot of his figures were very similar to this. I mean, this is pretty much the Elite 52 figure, and they did a top picks figure that was just the same. And then I want to say they did an Elite 58 figure was just this figure, except with a yelling expression. So a lot of people were over Braun Strowman by this point, which brings down this wave again. You have King Mabel, which was a beautiful inclusion. I think everybody loves this figure. Unlike Viscera, this guy can actually pose around. And he's bright and colorful. He's really big. He's probably the best figure in the set, in all honesty. You have an Undertaker figure from this set, which a lot of people didn't like because of the inaccuracies. It came with a cane mask. I just remember this Undertaker figure taking a lot of heat for whatever reason. The Daniel Bryan in this set was pretty solid. Though the head sculpt wasn't the greatest of all time, I thought the smile was a nice difference. And then you have the figure in the set that I think a lot of people did not want included, and that is the Brie Bella. I think, again, back in Elite Series 68, women's figures were still pretty hindered. They still had single-jointed arms, single-jointed legs. They still have basic boots to this day for whatever reason, but this Brie Bella also caught a lot of heat, something nobody really wanted in the wave. And again, I think overall, it's just a set that when people look at, they just think that it's mid. Number 94, WWE Elite Series 1. All right, Brad, I'm going to need you to take off your rose-tinted glasses for this WWE Elite Wave, man. We're diving into the first WWE Elite Wave ever with Series number 1. Now, the set's pretty iconic for a few reasons. Not only is it the first Elite Wave, but the Jeff Hardy figure that was supposed to be included in this that ended up getting canceled. And it's probably the rarest WWE Mattel Elite of all time. It's certainly up there with some other figures. I did add up the analytics, and if the Jeff Hardy figure would have came to fruition, it would have jumped 30 to 40 spots in the countdown. So that just goes to show what what one good figure can do for you in this ranking. It also goes to show how damn good that Jeff Hardy was. But diving into the rest of the set, the best figure in this set is probably the Elite One MVP. For this era, this figure was highly detailed. It had a sculpted torso. It included his headband, his chains, solid head sculpt, and a figure that actually aged really, really well in the grand scheme of things, given it's 14 years old just about. Another figure in this set is Edge, which is a very mid-edge, very plain Jane gear, head sculpt that definitely lacks some detail, rubber jacket that hinders a ton of articulation, Again, we are looking at this through modern eyes, and I want it to be known that Elite Series 1 is still an iconic set, and it's not really fair to compare it to Elite 101, given the new additions of Double Jointed Arms, True Effects, and the list goes on of all the details they include now, but we are ranking Elite Series 1 through 100, so Elite Series 1 has to be included. CM Punk in this set is also not that bad of a figure. I like the cloth goods, I like the attire they went with, but the head sculpt is certainly a sign of the times. Rey Mysterio in this set has gone on record on my channel for taking a ton of beating. Rey's early on Mattel elite figures just could not move that well compared to his figures of today and that's certainly because of his ball joints instead of the pine cone style joints he used to have i mean this guy's legs barely freaking move man you compare the early Rey mysterios to the nowadays Rey mysterios and they are night and day different and then rounding out our set we do have the elite series one undertaker and this figure is definitely bad head sculpts bad it comes with a coat just like edge that hinders all the articulation and it's just not a very well aged undertaker this might be the worst undertaker elite Elite they've ever done. It's definitely up there. An iconic set for sure, but without Jeff Hardy, it's in the bottom group when it comes to WWE Elite Series of all time. Number 93, WWE Elite Series 83. So getting into WWE Elite Series 83, man, this set right here, another boring set, man. And not only is this set completely boring as hell, not only does it feature Trash Corbin, oh my fault, King Trash Corbin, but it only features five figures in the set. And Mattel's never came out and said who is supposed to be the sixth member, but something tells me that it rhymes with Siskatine Cream. None of this has ever been confirmed, but it's something that I have definitely done my investigation into. But diving into this set, man, the best figure in this set, in my opinion, is gonna be the Edge figure. But this figure does not come with its own set of issues. This is shortly after Edge's triumphant return to WWE, and Mattel said, F you, Brad, we're still not giving you credit for all that work you did in the gym. I mean, look at this. They And they still do it to this day. Look at the Elite 102 Edge. It will arrive at my door in a matter of weeks, and we still have this issue. Nothing to rile me up like a good old-fashioned terrible torso choice. But Sasha Banks in this set's pretty damn solid. This is probably Sasha's best Elite. It's certainly better than her Elite 44 figure. And she's one of those that, much like Becky Lynch, that just could never nail the head sculpt on it. But I think they did a pretty decent job here 
here. It's got the weird posy jacket thing that nobody likes. The Trash Corbin in this set is the king of Trash Corbin. And they made his formula weird to where this figure is actually shorter than the rest of his elites. And again, we've referenced this in the video already, but this man changes his gear and the way he looks all the time. That he constantly gets new formulas from Mattel. Not a horrible figure, but certainly trash. Then you have the Drew McIntyre from this set. We've gotten this figure a multitude of times when you include the top talents and things of that nature. But this was the first time we saw Drew McIntyre in the updated, more accurate skin tone, which definitely was a bonus. But everybody knows Drew McIntyre figures mostly don't have a lot of meat on the bone. But I do like Drew McIntyre and I do like this figure. It's just not going to bring your set up 100 points. And then last but not least, we do have Dusty Rhodes. I think another elite Dusty Rhodes is no issue, but I just don't think this figure really does this set any favors. I don't think it's one that's like highly requested by a lot of people, which I guess doesn't really matter that much. But at the end of the day, you got the poncho in black with the red polka dots. And I love Dusty just as much as the next guy. But when you take this entire set into consideration and you subtract the whole entire figure, one figure in this set could have taken it and moved it back a bunch of spots to the bottom of the ranking. Or one figure in this set could have boosted it 30 or 40 spots, like an Elite One Jeff Hardy scenario. All in all, this is a set that is very mid and very black. Number 92. WWE Elite Series 61. Oh man, WWE Elite Series 61, man. This figure set right here really pisses me off and grinds my gears, man. The good characters that are in here besides, I'd say maybe one figure. I, I don't know, man. Let's dive into the set. Getting into it first, man. Let's start off with the best figure in the set, and it's going to be the Fashion Popo's Tyler Breeze. This is the best Tyler Breeze figure. I love the head sculpt on it. I love the cloth goods. We got a really cool gear, so you have like the cop pants, then you had the pink zebra with the black mixed in. It was a very sweet figure. I still hold this figure to a high standard today. And then you look back at Fandango next to him. Really good figure as well. I did torso swap it though because this torso right here doesn't fit anybody. I don't know. Maybe like John Morrison. Peak aesthetic John Morrison might hold a candle. But this Fandango figure, this, this is not what Fandango looks like. This is not what he looks like, man. Look at this torso right here. Completely over jacked. But the rest of the figure is damn good. I like the head sculpt. I like the cop hats. I like the cloth goods like I talked about. These two guys are my favorites in the set. We also have Big E in his American ice cream melting style attire. And this figure is pretty solid, but again, Big E figures are a nightmare to pose around with. Aesthetically, though, this figure does pass the test. Gotta love the nod to George Washington and America's colors. This entire trio of New Day actually looks very sweet, and it's probably my favorite New Day set we've seen of them all collectively together. Then you have the three duds in this set, or the three shiniest turds. Starting out first, we have my man Kevin Owens. You guys know that I am a massive Kevin Owens fan, and I hold his figures to a high regard. Just like John Cena, I am gonna critique them heavily and this head sculpt just wasn't it at this time he did not have this like shaved head sculpt look and i don't know why they made it look like he had a shaved head i wasn't feeling the likeness it just looked really goofy to me and kevin owens kind of has a track record of goofy looking head sculpts but he also has a track record of having really good head sculpts it missed the mark for me and this is one that i definitely do not like in kevin owens elite figure history we also have aj styles here this is one of my least favorite aj styles figures of all time while it is the usa gear which i do appreciate the head sculpt is the Elite 56 head sculpt with true effects applied, and it just did not work here. Another black attire, AJ Styles. And while this attire is actually quite pleasing, they did some weird coloration here with it, and there was just all sorts of weird stuff going on with this figure. Not to include the terrible AJ Styles body choice they always choose, but he didn't have knee pads, he looked very odd, and he just looks like some sort of lost puppy or something when I look at the head sculpt. I just do not care for this one. And then we have Shane McMahon, which is very weird because they took the Elite 50 Shane McMahon man gave it true effects which actually made him look younger in the face and then they gave him super dark hair with a little bit of salt mixed in there and it created this really weird head sculpt and aesthetic to the figure and we're pretty much looking at a repainted elite 50 figure which i don't mind but i was not a fan of this figure but this figure pretty much comes down to attire and head sculpt and while the attire isn't the best of all time, it's just another white jersey Shane O'Mac. The head sculpt completely misses and it. And this set right here just is not one of the best of all time, man. It's definitely in the bottom lower half here. And that is why Elite 61 comes in where it does. Number 91, WWE Elite Series 35. WWE Elite Series 35 is one of those sets that really baffles me because I actually tend to like this set. There's some figures in here that I that it honestly kind of pisses me off that it's this far in the countdown. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, man. I mean, cutting to the chase, the reason this figure set is here is because of Fernando and Diego, man. Look at these rubber jackets. Look at these rubber cloaks. Even the Maletta they come with is rubber. So you put that together with a plastic waist strap and both 
both of these guys have basic boots. Basic WWE action figure boots, as if these figures couldn't get any worse. It's basically like you're removing one third of a complete WWE Elite set, because I remember these being in stock at Ringside Collectibles for a very long time after they had gone, man. They're just this, this, these two guys definitely bring this set down. And the rest of the set isn't even that bad. But again, when you have one or two stinkers in your set, it is going to bring your set completely down on average. And we have to take the entire wave into a hole. But moving on, Randy Orton in this set is actually my favorite figure in the set. The blue gear was so sick. Head sculpt's a bit weird. It's like they painted teeth over just a straight lip mold. It's like he smiled with no teeth, but they painted teeth on there anyway. I like the cloth evolution shirt. I remember the actual moment that I bought this figure. And I remember being super hyped to seeing it on the peg. So I actually enjoyed this Randy Orton a whole lot. The Triple H from this set is very, very run-of-the-mill. Very plain Jane. It is an updated Triple H to this point. And can you imagine how badass the entrance gear with this Triple H would have been had it been in cloth or with a bendy wire? Like, imagine taking the gold of this and then chopping it up and adding some cloth to it. It would have been ridiculously sick. It also comes with a helmet, but it's not the best figure of all time. The Luke Harper in this set is very underrated. What a great figure. He's even got a sweat stain on the shirt. The shirt is rubber, though, we must admit. And he comes with really cool alligator accessories. The Luke Harper in the set is damn good. I'd probably put it at number two, if not number one. It poses around ridiculous. This figure is a beast. It even has the bandana in the back pocket. Fun head sculpt. Great figure overall. Fantastic Luke Harper Elite here. And then you have Earthquake, which I'm not, I'm not over the moon about an Earthquake figure here. But I know he was highly sought after. First time in the line Elite here. And I know people were excited for it. But overall, Diego and Fernando, shame on you. You brought this set down by yourselves. Number 90. WWE Elite Series 65. Alright man, WWE Elite Series 65, it features one of my least favorite WWE Elites of all time from Mattel, man. The Elite Series 65 Ronda Rousey, man. This figure sucks. Now outside of the weird leather jacket with the sculpted arms that were single jointed, it just looked very awkward. On top of that, you also had a painted on belly button or a belly button that just had a shirt painted over it, which was very obvious, even men on card. And then you get into the legs, man. And this this figure had zero leg rotation on the bottom. The boots didn't rotate. The thighs did rotate. I will give them credit. But from the knee down, there was no rotation. And this figure had single jointed knees. This figure's an abomination. On top of that, the feet fall forward like John Cena. This one right here is atrocious. The only good thing about this figure was the head sculpt, the table, and the contract that it came with. Outside of this figure, the Roman Reigns from this set is one of the best damn Roman Reigns figures you'll find. This is before the double jointed era, but this figure was very fire. I love the red and black attack here. His tattoo on his shoulder did have a little bit of a gap sometimes, depending on the deco shot you got. But this Roman Reigns is one of my favorites. It also features the IC Championship. Then you have Rusev Day in this set. And the Rusev figure is actually pretty damn good. However, most of the time when you found this figure at retail or you found this figure in the wild, the Rusev eyes were cross-eyed or something like that from a misprint. So the only time the figure didn't look absolutely terrible is if you repainted the eyes yourself. But the gear on this figure was very good. Aiden English from this set was actually one of my favorite figures from the set. Even though it featured the Daniel Bryan torso when it clearly should have featured the Sheamus torso, which you can actually fix up and make it look damn good, which is what I did with mine. The Nia Jax from this set did feature three different head sculpts, which was a cool change of pace. However, it did feature single jointed knees and arms that horribly hindered the figure. But I will give Mattel credit on the three head sculpts. And then you had the Eric Young figure which featured a lot of cool technology with it. It did have a molded hood, which was kind of trash. But this figure's pretty solid. I think if you asked anybody, they would tell you this is the best figure in the set. Lots of details, really cool sculpted boots, lots of cool paint apps, tattoos. This is a very solid Eric Young, but I would give the nod to Roman Reigns in my own personal opinion as the best figure in this set.